Since not all forests can be expected to produce the next tree generation via natural regeneration, such forests need to be afforested artificially. For a stable and productive new tree generation, it is important to ensure the planting of seedlings from certified provenances. For their cultivation, suitable seeds are required. Apart from the quality, their traits and provenance origin are important characteristics. Forest tree seeds are being harvested either in registered seed stands as approved by the Federal Forest Office or in similarly registered seed orchards. After harvest, seeds are cleaned and purified in seed extraction plants. Seed stands in the forest are selected by forest experts, primarily according to their phenotypic characteristics, following the legal guidelines for forest reproductive material. The advantage of seed orchards, in contrast to selected seed stands, is that seeds from selected plus trees can be produced under controlled conditions and by reducing cross-pollination with less suitable genotypes. Thus, it is possible to obtain better quality seeds, both in regard to growth and vitality, as well as characteristics associated to adaptive capacity for climate change. Furthermore, seed orchards help to conserve genetically valuable trees for the future. Seed harvest and the cultivation of healthy seedlings rely heavily on the condition of the seed mother tree. Therefore, forest scientists in Austria and many other countries already started decades ago to establish seed orchards and to implement breeding programs. Seed production of European larch has been a topic for Austrian foresters since the 1950s. They found that within some forests, beautiful, straight-growing large trees were growing, while elsewhere, rather crooked ones were occurring. This is why the first seed orchard in the 1950s was established with plus trees, collected from the Viennese forests and the region around Steyr in Upper Austria. We're here at the large seed orchard P3 in Klausen Leopoldsdorf, at about 520 meters above sea level. This large seed orchard produces seed material for submontane forests. Its main growth area is the northeastern edge of the Alps. For many years, seed material of this orchard has been highly demanded by nurseries and forest companies. Due to the age of the seed orchard, it can no longer produce high amounts of seed. Another disadvantage is that in comparison to other countries, the seed orchard was never part of a genetic improvement program, but it was only used for seed production. For the project Larch XXL, four stands which had been afforested in the past with seed material from the P3 orchard were identified. The offspring trees in these stands were measured and genotyped, and on this basis, especially tall and straight growing trees with high wood density were selected for the next generation of large seed orchards. In the current approach, we have been analyzing different afforestations, which were established with seeds out of the seed orchard. That means we look at how the trees grow, and this includes measuring the tree height and the diameter, and taking samples of the wood in order to determine the wood density. Moreover, cambium samples are taken for DNA analysis. With the help of genetic analysis, the parents of the respective tree can be identified by parentage analysis, which allows the calculation of the breeding value for the various tree characteristics. The analysis also included large plantation sites at very dry locations, and their analysis helps to account for the possible effects of global warming. We are very proud that we can assume that the new seed orchard, which will be established, has a higher wood production of approximately 10%. Now, so to speak, it's the forest manager's turn. We know exactly which trees to choose for the new orchard. Now it's time to find the right location for setting it up. And I really do think that we will obtain this efficiency increase. In Sweden, it was already recognized in the 1930s that the climate is constantly changing and that productivity should be improved. In 1949, the first pine seed orchard, a so-called first-generation orchard, was established. 
In 1970, already 574 hectares of pine seed orchards and 234 hectares of spruce seed orchards were established and maintained. The starting point was today's tree breeding station in Ekebo, close to Malmö, where especially with spruce and pine, outstanding results have been achieved. At the beginning of a breeding strategy, suitable plus trees are phenotypically selected, which are then genetically tested. The best of these are selected and interbred with each other. This results in a new and improved tree generation. These are once again genetically tested and the cycle repeats itself over 20 years and results in the next breeding generation. During the individual breeding generations, grafts of the best individuals are used to create improved seed orchards. Here we have donor plants of the breeding population from uh, Norway spruce. We, are, we have crossings between the best parents after testing and uh, we have 100 seedlings per family. So I mean here for example we have a family with very early flushing uh, progeny and here we have another family that's late flushing. So by looking at the flushing time we can decide where to use the different varieties. From the 100 forest plants which are collected here, the top 45 are selected and propagated by cuttings. For this purpose, twigs from young plants are removed and potted. These rooted cuttings were inserted uh, 12 weeks ago and they now sprouted and there should be roots. We'll look and see. Yes, look there we have good roots and uh, this plant will grow another year and then we'll plant it out in field trials. In the field trials it will be measured the first time after six years then we measure the height and then we'll come back and measure diameter, height and uh, various other things after 12, 13 years, about 20% of the rotation time, then we have good estimates of the, of the production for the, for the full rotation. This is a seven-year-old demonstration of forestation, in which different provenance origins and breeding generations were planted. And uh, down here in this uh, plot, that's uh, the unimproved Swedish spruce, provenance Ramkvilla, and you can see it has an early flush and that's why the local spruce often get damaged by frost. In that plot over here, those are the controlled crossings from the very best Swedish spruce material. Here are more than a meter long. So this is one, one year's growth from here to up there. At this field trial, every family is represented by 10 plants, and you can see that many families grow significantly better than others. It turns out that after only five years, the best trees were 45% taller than trees which were not improved. The scientists predict that volume production will increase up to about 35%. For the continued tree improvement, only the best genotypes are selected. However, Many years may pass until a seed orchard can be established. It takes six years for testing and then a second test after 12 years. So this is like 12 years from last crossing and we can have this result. As soon as we have results from the uh, genetic tests and one of the companies want to have a seed orchard, then we compose the best seed orchard possible for that area. We select the very best clones and then we graft a, a large number of each clone and plant them out in the seed orchard. For this purpose, twigs from the improved trees are grafted. After two years, the tree is planted out in the seed orchard in August. This sprued seed plantation on the east coast of southern Sweden is approximately 10 years old. The goal here is to produce genetically improved seeds for the Swedish forestry industry. The parent trees were chosen from appropriately genetically tested material. By having it in, in the east part of Sweden, 
Uh, we have a little precipitation, we have many sun hours that makes the trees stressed and they flower and give a good crop. The trees which grow from the seed of the seed orchard should be well adapted to climate change, since they were tested at many test locations. Additionally, mother trees, which don't behave as expected, will be removed from the orchard and replaced with trees having more appropriate genetic characteristics. In this way, the quality of the seeds is constantly improving. The mature cones are harvested from the end of September until November and sent to a seed processing plant to extract and clean the seeds. These seeds uh, will typically be sent to Skog Forsk Research Station in Sevar to clean the seeds and uh, to take away dead seeds uh, to improve the germination uh, quality of the seed crop. Due to the post-processing of the seeds, a germination capacity of 96 to 98 percent can be reached. Seeds from seed orchards are often larger. This means they have more germination energy. Seedlings grow faster, and this is a big advantage for forest tree nurseries. In this seed orchard in southern Sweden, 5 kilograms of seeds per year and hectare are produced on average. 5 kilos of seeds will be about uh, half a million uh, seedlings. So the whole seed orchard here will give about 10 million seedlings per year. Swedish forest owners can use the online tool Plantval, which means plant selection, where they locate their reforestation site on a map and then can search for the best suited seed orchards and provenance origins. This tool also helps to estimate what plant productivity they can expect at their forest site. Until a new generation of improved reproductive material is available, many years will pass. Well, we calculated as an average that it takes 20 to 25 years to, to go from, from a seed to the next round of seeds. By testing material, selecting new material, making the control crossings and evaluate the new generation. So it's a time-consuming work. It is certain that through targeted selection of suitable trees, a genetic improvement in stability and productivity can be achieved. Many important wood producing countries like the USA or Sweden have already achieved an increase by 20% in growth. Through the consistent implementation of their research and development results, they will continue to improve their productivity in the future. Allerdings muss man dazu sagen, However, it must be said that here in Scandinavia the seed origins, or the areas in which the seed material is used, are relatively homogeneous. While in Austria there is a much larger variety of seed origin, due to various geological, climatic and altitude factors. That makes it more complicated for us. Only when the seed provenance is properly selected will the seedling prosper. For that, we need to find suitable trees regionally, within our populations. Of course, there are forest stands and seed origins of Norway spruce in Austria, which are superior in growth, even in traits like drought resistance. For the future, it is important to identify them and collect them in seed orchards. Sweden is pioneering this and should be seen as an excellent example as to how to create seed orchards and take care of them in order to have suitable material for the future that is appropriate for climate change and has the plasticity to adapt. The goal should be the conservation and improvement of genetic resources, which includes the search and preservation of the genetic material for future reforestations. The gap to other countries, like Sweden, should be bridged. Since we know that spruce and pine seeds from this Swedish research program in Central Europe have its limits, it is essential to develop a comparable climate adaptation and breeding strategy for the main tree species. This will ensure the long-term efficiency of the Austrian forest industry and value chain.